Hi, guys. Welcome, intrepid possums, regular viewers. Hi to new people. So it's continued to be an ultra interesting week in US politics. More and more groups are hiving off to support Kamala. We had the white dudes for Kamala and so on. And now the Mormons, Church of Latter-day Saints, has come out um, and they are also going to advise their people to vote for the Democrats. That might be for the first time. And there's a movement amongst other evangelicals who are maybe thinking this vulgar, adulterous, corrupt man is possibly not the best example for their children. So I want to have a quick look here how... I'm sure we're going to see other groups, but how we describe it, so non-mainstream groups, how non-mainstream groups are getting behind the Democrats. Will we see more of this, more of these different groups, different ones that are normally rusted on Republicans and then they got all enthusiastic uh, about Trump? And so now let's have a look at other groups. Here we go. Well, yes, they do have to make a decision. That's exactly right. Yes. So the page of wands. Now, this person is a convincing speaker. I think um, they've been having Zoom calls too and I've heard thousands of people are joining these Zoom calls and I think they're beginning to have these conversations. The Queen of Pentacles represents stability and keeping people focused. She's very focused on her pentacles, which is family values never been close to my heart. I mean, you can pick your friends but not your relations. You know how it is. Um, but anyway, that is their buzz very much. She represents that. And I think there's female energy in this too that perhaps evangelical women and stuff, even though they would never say it out loud, are actually quietly horrified by how their bodies are being taken over as well with this Project 25 Handmaid's Tale energy. Interesting. They have to make a decision because their hearts have been pierced. I don't know. Do they? I think they believed what he said. This is a man the Yeti, who has never darkened the door of a church and he managed to get close to a church one time and hold the Bible upside down, lest we forget. But they were brought in to the tent believing. Remember they'd send people into the White House to do the laying on of hands and all this. They believed in him and now he's disappointed them. So I love that. You get votes where you can get them, no? Goody, goody. Now, Trump, of course, spends every waking moment offending all sorts of people, any group of people, and he's really been going hard after veterans and saying terrible things, and more veterans than ever are speaking up against him. And they're really, really starting to have some traction now. And one of the things I've been complaining about on this channel for five years, why is Fox, the, the channel that's on 24-7, often in airports, and I've heard from veterans in military bases, in the canteen, every, well, all you got was Fox, 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 right, which was very destructive and undermining of solidarity for service members. But with this, more are coming forward. 
And another group that he's offended is by what he said about the Congressional Medal of Honour not being as important as the Presidential Medal of Honour because the people who got it were usually wounded or dead. I mean, he's unspeakable. He's absolutely unspeakable. But keep talking, Donald, keep talking. So now, before I go any further, I want to double back into the Elon Musk Yeti interview. Now, there's been lots of coverage about it, but it's all been about how Trump did this and said that, right? So, but not about Elon Musk's side of the story. And so he was the one who has chosen to back this man. He offered up his huge platform for the pharmaceutically enhanced rants. And then he didn't get a word in edgeways. If you listen to any part of it again, he cannot get a sentence out. This is Elon I'm talking about. And he sounds like this simpering idiot and acolyte who just said, yes, yes, every 10 minutes, yes. It's pathetic. He sounds like a petulant 11-year-old, which is probably pretty close to the mark. I'm not called the queen of snark for nothing if you knew. Okay, so I want to have a little look. I'm going to use the circus cards because why wouldn't you? Was Musk embarrassed by this? For one of the richest in the world, allegedly the richest, I don't believe that for a minute, um, but certainly significantly wealthy, significantly influential. However, he came across like a limp, you know, just limp sausage. So how is Musk after the interview? How is Elon Musk after the interview? And I digress yet again. When Trump went ahead and said, I want a strong man like you, Elon, who just sacks workers, don't even think about it, just say you're all gone. I think, could be wrong, I think Elon was actually taken aback by that because he's used to doing this and treating workers really badly, but you normally don't go around the world bragging that you are the worst boss in the world. Usually that's not your calling card, Pep. So, Elon, after the interview, what does he think? Okay. What do you reckon, Elon? <laughs> oh, God. Look, I think if Elon could have pulled the plug, he would have in some way. It, this is like nails in his own coffin. He was, he's gone from being the exciting venture capitalist, if you like that sort of thing, doesn't work for my old lefty heart, but some people admire people who use other people's money to make more money for themselves and they think that's really awesome, okay? But this is a nail in his coffin of likability. People were going off him for their own reasons, but this is this didn't go well for him. This is the Getty next to the junior version of the Getty. Like I was just saying, he came across as a child, like this is an older person, this is the younger one, and he was trying to sell popcorn to the world, going, look, I can get a one-on-one -on -one interview with the Getty and that's how I can influence the American election. Look at this card. Can you see this card? It's like he's, he got stuck with someone else's bubble gum. Ooh, yuck. Stretching it, trying to make it work, trying to get it off his hands. 
and he can't. And then Ace of Coins, what should have been a big deal for him, just came down to this little tiny bit of nonsense. Ace of Coins. Ooh, yucky poo. Ah. How weird is that? Now, while I'm shuffling, now word went out, we know Celine Dion was very unhappy about the Yeti using the Titanic song, but I don't think she's actually suing him. Who is actually suing him for uh, using music unsolicited and uncompensated is Isaac Hayes' family. Now, those intrepid viewers who are around my age will remember the song Hold On. It was a classic. And his family are suing for $3 million for the unsolicited use of that. So that's good. Um, in other news, a woman called Tina Rettis of Colorado has pleaded guilty for election fraud. So it's happening in Georgia, Arizona, and Colorado. So what I want to know is the new people who have been brought on board for this election and they're told in these swing states, these are MAGA files, you'll be there and if we ask you to do something, you will do it, okay? They're being solicited ahead of time to do corrupt and unlawful things. I want to know with this spread, are they watching these other cases? Do they realise they could go to jail for this or not? Are they just in their own little info silo and they have no idea and they're just convinced if I do it for the Yeti, I'm doing it for the good of America? What do they actually believe? Do they know they're being asked to do something unlawful? That's my question. Do they know? And the Republican Party has bragged they've got at least 70 in place. Do they know? Are they excited by that? Do they think that's fantastic or are they just thick as two short planks and they're just being used? Let's have a look. Neither would surprise me. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, this is interesting. I think it's a bit mixed in the sense the death card, they're not going to get away with it this time, right? Now, the system has been very slow, i.e. four years too slow about dealing with it, but it is happening now. So because it's in the news now, are they getting it? Are they hearing it? Because it's not going to go well for them. I think some will hear it and will actually walk away and refuse to do it. They might have agreed six months ago. Yeah, yeah, I'll put the votes in the boot of my car or the trunk, as you call it. I'll put the votes in the trunk of my car and drive off with them. I'll do anything, you know. No. I think some of them will walk away because they realise the star, meaning best of America, is at stake here. And some are evaluating it. Oh, I was going to do that, but I'm not sure now. So from that, I would say they will still have people to do it because there's no shortage of gullible people who are willfully ignorant, proud of their ignorance, and sign up. So it's not as though we're out of the woods. They'll have others. But I think some of those that have been in the system for a while are thinking maybe it's not worth it. Hmm. Now, we have to find out what's happening. Just let me check my notes here. Oh, yeah. Murdoch's having it both ways. 
right? Fox is struggling and scrambling and doing their Titanic deck chairs thing. But the Wall Street Journal, which is also a Murdoch publication, is now putting out headlines like Trump looking like a loser again and Trump meets half the moment. I love that. So the Wall Street Journal's boxes, right, they're freaking out. So we have to talk about the sentencing that's coming up just in two days or something. <gasps> but the other exciting thing is there's been a development in Palm Springs or Palm Beach. I get confused between the palms. We have a lot of Palm Springs, Palm Beach type names in Australia too. But Mar-a-Lago, the mayor of, I think it's Palm Beach, is getting a lot of complaints because since the attempted shooting, they've had to close or chose to close one of the main arteries um, of the town, which is immensely inconvenient for the locals. And there are whispers they might close Mar-a-Lago. Wouldn't that be fascinating? It'd be absolutely fascinating. So let's have a look. Oh, sorry about that door. Thanks. <laughs> Noisiest door in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay. So will Mar-a-Lago be closed? Let's have a look. Oh, wouldn't that be a dream come true? Okay. Mar-a-Lago. What's going to happen? of the local community in Maralai. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, look, I don't see it getting closed down. Damn. But you know how much I'd love to be wrong. But anyway... Here's the card of theft. Now, what could that be referring to in terms of Mar-a-Lago and documents and everything else, right? It's it, it should actually be preserved for posterity as the home of corruption unprecedented. In so there's this weird theft energy around it. Um, this is... A, People with money in the area, many of whom would probably be richer than the Yeti because we know he's a bino, billionaire in name only, right? They're really not impressed. They're waiting for something to be done about this. They're sick of it. It's been how long since the attempt? A month or something? It's not that long, but they are sick of it, really. So they're waiting for a change. On the one hand, here is rapid change and the burden card here. So I think something will happen that is a burden, but is it a burden to the people of Palm Beach or is it a burden to the Yeti? I think we need another couple of cards. So let's see, but I'm not getting a closure type card here. Let's have a look. This Ten of Wands, what's going on? It's certainly a burden to that community because they must be inundated with agents and personnel at all times. So let's have a look. Whose burden is it? Oh, okay. So I think this is juggling different needs. So this is the need of locals versus the need to protect a former president because if Mar-a-Lago was closed, where's the man going to live? He could put up a little tent next to Ivana at Redminster. What a great idea. But that is a consideration and they're going to have to make it quickly with this chariot card. So I think they're going to make an arrangement with 
Secret Service or something, they're going to open that road again rather than close Mar-a-Lago. Oh, please be wrong, Lena, please be wrong. Now, before I get to look at the sentencing, which is very imminent, I just wanted to draw your attention to something in the news in the fine print today. The FBI are investigating a Russian campaign person for Trump 2016, Dmitry Simes, um, and he is now being investigated rather thoroughly. This was a house search. Now, this goes back. Remember, we've become familiar with Lev Parnes, but not so much about Igor. And I think Igor refused to speak and Lev did a deal. I suspect this is related to all that stuff in 2016. So let's have a quick look. No, we won't have a quick look. We'll just go straight to sentencing. But I just wanted to draw your attention to that. I think it goes back to Giuliani, Russia and Bagmen. Okay, let's have a look. What can we expect from the sentencing? I'm not expecting a lot. Oh, I hope it's not deferred again. It's hard work, isn't it, following all this stuff? Hard work. Let's have a look. Okay, so... Here we go, Judge Mishan. Remember it. Oh, shush, shush, shush. Okay. All right. Now, the first card out, the Emperor. This is often my card for the Yeti, ironically, although in this case I suspect it might be Mashon himself because he's got the power in this situation. He has to make the decision. And from what I recall from legal and analysts and stuff, um, he comes out with something on the 16th, which is more or less when this video is going up, I think, some preliminary thing to the sentencing um, we have fake happy families here, my GOP card, and King of Cups, Biden. So this is Democrats versus GOP, both watching this avidly because should he get a significant sentence, it's a game changer for, I was going to say the Olympics, I mean the election. So both parties are hyper-invested in this. However, I think he'll make a very compelling, this is Judge Mashan, I think, speaking here, he will make a very compelling case for why this man should go to jail. But I'm not getting any jail cards here or hesitation. And so to me, that means either a postponed sentence till after the election does that mean November or does that mean January 20? You know, like what does it mean? Or possibly with the fake happy families card, it could be an ankle bracelet, but I don't think so. I think he's going to have to explain to both sides why he's giving the sentence he is. Democrats will want to hear why isn't he going to jail and the GOP want to hear, why has he even been in court? You know, no one else would go to court for this. Well, 34 counts later, I think catch up, you know. All right, now, one more quick thing is predictably, as I said just in the last video, um, and you wouldn't have to be a psychic to say this, the Yeti's firing all his people and bringing back the old guard of the glory days, including Corey Lewandowski and Kellyanne Conway. 
Let's just have a quick look at Kelly Ann. Can she work her magic again? Talk about being a Yeti whisperer. If anyone was, it was that woman. But it's a different world. That was eight years ago, nudging nine years ago, if you go back to 15. So Kellyanne Conway, who somehow escaped the guillotine the first 17 times, strange woman, and her husband's so fabulous and she is so awful. I feel, I feel for the kids, actually, you know, like you'd have to think, Dad, they'd be on Dad's side, but you never know. This is Kellyanne. Oh, look, you know, she's doing it for the money. What is it with some people there is never enough money and if you ask me, they're trying to fill the hungry hole in their heart because money doesn't fill it. She's doing it for the money. Oh, please, you know. She realises she's a bit of a star, but only a bit because the hermit, she's, I don't think she talks with the other aides in any way. I think she's sort of seen as the senior doyen. She keeps herself to herself. It's almost a personal challenge for Kellyanne. He's wounded and she's arguably going to try and bail him out. These aren't cards of massive success by any means. I don't think she's going to make that critical difference and then it'll be her fault, but... No sympathy here. So I think she's going to make him feel better short term. And we know he only operates short term, like from now to lunchtime. That's, you know, his projected worldview. All right, guys. Now, when I put this video up, I am going to include a link. And it's a lovely video a viewer sent me. Um, and it's Tim Waltz's old students talking about what an amazing teacher he was. And I've also got an extra special link that I'm going to put up from another viewer who made a documentary about her dad's story. And I asked if I could share it with everyone. She said, yes. And basically how he bought the American narrative that worked against him and all of them for so many decades. But it's done with love. But I think every American high school should actually be showing this documentary, really, and then having a discussion about it. So I'm putting both those links up. So let me know what you think in the comments. And in the meantime, stay cool. Good luck with everything. Stay safe and take care. Bye now.